not good. I messed up all my ring walk and we had planned to start running to the ring. <laughs> I was excited. I lost it. I lost the rack completely. I was like, I'm going to sit down on this chair, whatever. Um, Frank, massive, massive thank you, Frank. Um, a lot of people don't know, but Frank brought me back from the brink of death and believed in me and gave me a big contract to box again um, when everybody else was probably scared to get me in the ring again. So, uh, massive thanks, Frank. And not only did he do it this time, but he'd done it the first time as well. Um, he got me to fight with Joey Abel, Derek Chisora for the mandatory position, which it led me to fight Vladimir Klitschko. <laughs> And then, then he, he brought me back again from, from being like a fat man and 28 stone to, to get me the, the return of the Mac in Manchester, which was absolutely epic, 20,000 at home. From being a big old fat boy six months before to selling 20,000 tickets. And, you know, it really was the return of the Mac against Sefer. Nobody believed, did they, Frank? Yeah. And then when he announced that we're going to go to Belfast and we sold 35,000 tickets at the, um, the, what was it called? Uh, Park, Windsor Park, Windsor Park. Um, and I didn't have a great performance against Francesco Pianetti because I wasn't even there yet, I wasn't even ready. And then I said, do you know what Frank, I was supposed to have a couple more fights Frank, wasn't yeah, I? Two more. I was supposed to have two more, same level as Pianetti and Sefa. Um, I said to Frank, you know what, get me wilder because I can't do this, I'm either the best in the world or I'm not. And he's all here to call me a liar. Um, and I wasn't, I'll, I'll, I, I hold my hands up to this. I wasn't ready for Deontay Wilder the first time. It was too quick. Um, but we took it anyway because I'm a fighting man. And I wanted to prove to the world that I'm back with a bang. We had that great fight over there, Frank. And, you know, it's gone on from there, really. Uh, it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It's been like a, snow a big snowball rolling down a mountain. Um, and it's peaked out here at, uh, at Wembley Stadium. We're a European record. And you know what, big shout out to Top Rank and uh, Brad, uh, Todd, Bob, everybody else in the office over there. Um, they made it happen in America, in the home of the Gypsy King, Las Vegas. Uh, you know, made some big, big nights happen with a Wilder 2 fight, Wilder 3, Swartz, Wally. Um, it was unbelievable, you know, they treat me like a superstar. Um, I went on an American voyage to crack America, conquered America, so to say. Um, and I, I was brought back to England to a hero's welcome. Um, um, what a welcome I had tonight for about 94,000 of my fellow countrymen. Um, it was fantastic. So, you know, I was here at the press conference only a few weeks ago on my own when it all started and single-handedly sold that 94,000 tickets. And I don't believe there's an entertainer in the world in sports on his own can sell 94,000 tickets without even an opponent. So yeah, I'll pat myself on the back. <laughs> Proof was in the pudding, and how many people, how did the cheer he got when he came into the ring when Tyson got? Yeah. They were Tyson fans, Tyson's fans, all of them. And if you, even the couple who may not be, they certainly were, were, were time the fight was over. It was a phenomenal performance. For me, he is without a doubt the best heavyweight in his generation. She would be a great heavyweight in any generation, and he's the best, I've got to say it now, probably the best fighter I've ever been involved with. Frank's right. been involved with a lot of fighters, so big respect for that, Frank. And that's, that's, that's a fact, because where you come back from, what you've done, yeah. and what you continue to do, it's just amazing. It's amazing. And in, in most of the fights you come back against Wilder twice, you was an underdog. Yeah, and come off the canvas twice. Yes. And they, no, you can bet in office, bet, betting you as an underdog, yeah. and, uh, and you, you went and done it in the other guy's backyard. You know, I'd like to share with everybody in the room, <coughs> What did I say, Frank, tonight in the changing room to you, to everybody, to me brothers, me dad, trainers? What did I say? Do you remember before the fight? Come on, tell me again. Do you remember, Sugar? I, I, I didn't hear. I just heard everybody right cheering in the back. I said this is going to be an exactly exceptional exactly performance. I'm going to bomb a proper show. That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I just felt it. I could feel it. You know, I felt good. My feet were good. My jab was good. Jab, jab was jab was super. Jabbing the head right off him. Derek is already on left. Yeah, because he Derek Chisora is now homeless, sorry to everybody. He lost his house to Joseph Parker, so unlucky. Um, and Derek, I have got a house next to my house in Morecambe. You are welcome in it any time, my brother. But the moral to the story is, never bet your house on something unless you're 1 million percent sure. 
You can never be sure in every division. So now he's homeless. Good luck to him. Questions? Awesome. Many congratulations. Congratulations to Sugar for the whole team. I was there, your presser for your return, so amazing. Stuff. Thank you, thank you. I don't know if you agree this, I feel like you're getting better. Yeah, you know, one thing that has happened with me, um, when I brought Sugar in for the last couple of fights, he took me back to being a ranked novice. He made me feel like a piece of shit, and that's without swearing or anything. He made me feel terrible as a boxer. Like, he took the lineal heavyweight champion, heavyweight champion of the world, undefeated. And he, he, he's the only man who could ever make me feel like a bum, like I've never had a fight in my life. But it takes a special mentality to go back to brass, brass tacks and back, back to grassroots and start again. And we put a lot of time in sugar, didn't we, over the last few years. What people don't know about, all the camps we've had, without fighting, we've been in camp, we've been in Miami, we've been in Vegas, we've been in Dallas, we've been everywhere. Training, training, training with his style. Um, and I think, it was a, I think it was an absolute fantastic camp because we had it in Morecambe Bay, where I'm from, with a good Lancashire, fresh air and sea air. Um, everyone thought that it might not have been a good idea to have it at home, but Andy Lee said to me, you train well at home, couple of, last year it was, so we went at home and we was very happy, and we practised and practised and practised, and long range punching, using the jab off the shoulder, and I think everyone will agree with me in here tonight, the shot that done kept catching him was the check hook, on it, um, yeah. Short, yeah, I kept clipping him with that check hook, and we practised on the pads, wouldn't we? Bang, 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 bang. And then the one thing that amazed me was, I clipped the body snatcher with the left hook, yeah, <laughs> to the body, and I went, you heard body snatcher, didn't you? And he went, yeah. <laughs> so it was funny. <coughs> Thank you. The answer to your question, though, about rambling on, is am I getting better? Hell yeah, I'm getting better. I think you're right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Thank you. Congrats on another great victory. Thank you. Uh, I noticed, you know, Dillian White was it's pretty front foot heavy, as we know, and he was looted to be a sucker for the uppercut. Did you know early on in the fight that you were going to with that shot? Did I didn't want to let them, them shots go too early, because he let, let the straight okay. one, two, bang, bang. He was catching one of his gloves, yeah? And I was shooting it high. I can hear Andy Lee say, shoot it low, shoot it low, yeah? But I didn't want to bring it up too early, because he was, pre he was preparing to block the straight. And I started touching him there, touching him to the body with the, with the uppercut to the body. And then I just slipped his eye and bang, beautiful peach. And it was the time for it. I think it was, what was it, round five, round six? Six. I was softening him up with the jab. I didn't want to get involved in a, in a brawl, trading punches like I did against Wilder. I wanted to keep me distance, use me range. And I thought I, bo I thought I was boxing really well. I thought I was using the jab, splashing him up with the jab. He tried to make it rough, fair play to him. He was trying to manhandle me in there. But, you know, I have even tried wrestling with a dinosaur before. I'm like a T-Rex in there, I'm six foot nine, 270 pounds. It's difficult, especially when you're a shorter um, and you're not as quick as well. And he tried hitting me with the elbows, head. He tried knocking me, done a Vladimir Klitschko on me. Um, he was trying everything. He was using the forearms, trying to elbow me. But, and then when you try and cheat in a fight, you always come up second best because he went to knock me and he got caught, which was his own fault. But, like I've always said, boxing is not ballet dancing, it's a contact sports fight. So I ain't complaining. Dylan done his thing. And for the man that's been avoided for the best part of two, three years, he's been mandatory for forever. Um, he deserves his credit, you know, he got his shot. He made millions of dollars, thanks to me. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my performance. And I hope he's happy with his performance because he didn't fight a world champion tonight. I ain't no world champion. I'm a legend in this game. And um, there ain't, you can't deny it. I'm the best heavyweight it's ever been. Yeah. There ain't never been one who could beat me. Because you know why? I'm not just being, not, I'm not just being like, confident. Six foot nine frame, 270 pound weight, can move like a middleweight, can hit like a thunderstorm, and can take a punch like anybody else. <laughs> you couldn't fight if you had to be. Yeah, and I've got balls like King Kong, a heart of a lion, the mindset of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I just can't, I just, it is what it is, but you know, it was a very special night. Um, and what, what a way to top it all off, Frank. Right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. You know, it was absolutely fantastic, and 
you know, I wasn't 22 months out of the ring. I didn't have a little daughter die four weeks before my last fight. I brought her back to life again, I'm sleeping <clears> in a hospital bed floor, four or five weeks before I fought Wilder yeah. 3. People don't know all this. I don't complain, I don't make excuses. And he asked me, are you at your best for the Wilder 3? I said, yeah, I am. Because it wasn't Deontay's fault, it was my fault. And I had to deal with my own stuff, but we had injury-free camp. Um, and I trained for 14 weeks for this camp. Um, so yeah, it was good. I felt good, I felt fresh, and I felt I felt sharp, and the performance told it all tonight. Super. Uh, and nice. I said, you look unbeatable right now at the moment. Um, you're on top, obviously, you're the best heavyweight in the world, and all time great. And I know adrenaline's running high right now at the moment. So what will go into your decision as you move forward and take some time to clear your head to see what you will do next going forward? Yeah, you know, I'll tell you this one for free. Before I fought Deontay Wilder three. I was in my house in Vegas and I said to Paris, I said, this is going to be the last fight, baby. I, I just don't want to do it anymore. And she said, yes, I'm happy. Will it be the last fight? And then after the fight, I said to her in the shower, I said, it's definitely the last fight. It's no more of this. And then I was happy with that decision. And I got a call from Frank saying, you know, we can do a homecoming fight at Wembley. And I was like, I said to Paris, I said, I can't go one more time. I've got to get the old boots out again. And, and, you know, it was a tough decision because I was happy being in Morecambe retired. I used to go to the gym to watch Joe Parker train and the boys, Tommy. I used to say to Andy, I'm happy I'm retired. Do you remember Andy? Yeah. Um, and then I come back for a big, big fight at home. and It's been amazing. I couldn't have topped it off. It's been a fairy tale a few years. It's been absolutely um, more than I ever dreamed of uh, as a kid and as an adult. So... Big thank you to everybody who's helped me in my career, promoters, trainers, managers, um, all the journalists, all the TV companies, ESPN Plus, ESPN, BT Sport, Box Office, BT Sport, everybody. Because everybody played a big part in, in the, the making of the Gypsy King. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, wasn't just made easy, it took a long time, so it, uh, was, I'm very happy with my career, I've won it. By the way, I do take a lot of pride in this, and I know pride's not the best thing to be, but... Very proud of, I've won two English titles, two British titles, two Commonwealth titles, the Irish title, the European title, WBO Intercontinental, WBO International, WBO Super, WBA Super, IPF, IBO, Ring Magazine, Lineal, WBC, WBC Miami, WBC Global. I've won every belt there is to win. Yeah. There is a belt to win. I've won every belt in the game. If this was a computer game, it would definitely be completed, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 Mike Brooks. Tyson, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. you also missed the fact that you were fighter of the year twice as well. I got fight of the year twice. I got ring magazine fight of the year. I got upset of the year. I got comeback of the year. I don't think there's a war I haven't won. I got round of the year. And I almost won inspiration of the year as well. So, yeah, um, not too shabby. Obviously, you're... you're reigning Ring Magazine and WBC champion just now. There's a lot of retirement talk, but surely you're going to hold on to your, your championship belts at least for another six months. When it gets to um, Usyk against Joshua 2, there's going to be calls for you to fight the winner of that fight. Will you dismiss it? Will you take your time to think about it? You know what? I've said what I've said, um, and I'm happy with my uh, decisions. I'm going to go home with my wife, my kids, Spent a lot of time on the road. I've been I've been away a long time. I've, I've fulfilled everything I've ever wanted to fulfil. I'm going to retire as the only second heavyweight in history after Rocky Marciano to retire undefeated. Two-time Ring Magazine heavyweight champion of the world. There's never been a Ring Magazine holder in my era, not one of them, and there hasn't been a lineal in my era either because all roads led to the Gypsy King, and I was unbeatable in at this game. Is that final? You're saying final. <coughs> I definitely think so. But I'm not ruling out, I will not rule out exhibitions, for sure. Get some of that Floyd Mayer with the money. Um, you know, I want to have fun. You know, I'm an entertainer. You saw tonight, I entertain. It's what I do best. I'm an entertainer. Um, so I want to have a lot of fun. You know, Big Francis Nagani was here today. He's on my hit list in an exhibition fight. However he wants it. In a cage, in a boxing ring, boxing gloves, UFC gloves. We can make it happen. I think everyone wants to see he's a monster of a guy. I'm a monster of a guy, so it'll be a clash of the titans for sure. Thank you. Thank you.
Tyson, this is Matt for Into Boxing. Yeah. First off, congratulations. Um, second of all, um, with everything you've achieved in your career, where does that entrance and coming out in front of 94,000 people rank? Because you must have to pinch yourself. You've been away to America. Yeah. You've come back. Did you did you expect this when the fight got announced? That was the icing on the cake. You know, um, the ring the ring walk um, music and thing was was planned. It was something that I wanted to do. Um, it means a lot to me that song, uh, the Diggy Small song, because it was just a dream. It was all a dream, um, and it all come to reality. So it was um, it was unbelievable. It was just an amazing night. Ring walk was very special to me. Um, I got lost at ring walk actually. I started running, and screaming, and jumping. I was on fire tonight. I really enjoyed myself, and um, it was phenomenal. You know, the fans were amazing. Everybody, the whole thing, the whole show was amazing. I could. If you could have planned the perfect show, perfect ring walk, perfect entrance, perfect fight, I couldn't have planned that any better. Look at me. I don't, I'm not looked in the mirror, but I don't feel like there's a mark on me. I never took any damaging blows. I've got out of the ring in one piece, like I said to God in the beginning, when I was there, as I let both men get out of the ring in one piece. Dillian's up. Hopefully he goes home to his family in one piece, and he does. And we can both, both go home and enjoy our uh, spoils of war. That's what it's about. And that lady there asked three times, so I'm going to come to you next. Fire away. Hi, congratulations. Thank you. So, I heard you say you're at your happiest when on the ring, and you're getting paid to for doing something you absolutely love, and yeah. you would do it for free anyway. Yes. So, first of all, how does it feel to be in this position? What are the qualities that allowed you to be above all other human beings that, being that tried to defeat you on the ring? And also, are you really sure you're ready to give up the adrenaline, the lifestyle, and the ring to retire right it, now? It was absolutely fantastic, you know. I feel at home in that ring. I feel like a, a dolphin in the, in the water in that room. Um, it's what I do best. It's what I was born to do, you know. People are born and they never find a calling card. Some people do, some people don't. But I really do believe that I was always meant to be heavyweight champion of the world. There's nothing else that was ever going to be. From being a little boy, I was always destined to be the heavyweight champion. I did There was nobody that didn't believe it. My family all believed. So it was. Um, it's been a very special career to me. Very special. Tyson over here. WWE have announced the UK pay per view show in September in Cardiff. It's the first big stadium show here since 1992. Yeah. A question to you, Gypsy King. Are you going to be there? Are you going to be competing? Sorry, can you say that again? Because I misheard you. Um, the WWE yeah. announced a UK pay-per-view show yeah. um, in September in Cardiff. It's the first big stadium show here since, since 1992. Month. Yeah. Are you going to be there? Don't rule me out with fighting there. Um, you might see me at SummerSlam coming up soon. I got to speak to Vince and the boys. Maybe, maybe make this happen. I know there's Drew McIntyre's been saying a lot of things about me. I have to knock him out. <laughs> like a daddy's pal, um, you know. I'd love to be at Cardiff. I'd love to be back at, back in the centre stage in the UK, um, especially for the wrestling. I enjoyed it last time in Saudi Arabia. It was it was fantastic. So to come here and do it would be phenomenal. Um, and I'm gonna we're definitely gonna make a bit of contact and, and see coming in that summer slam being a reality. Tyson, what do you think when um, being white came out southward? I didn't think much of it, to be fair. Um, it, did it confuse me? No. Because I did it straight back to him in round two. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> it was like he came out south ball, I come out south ball. It was different. And I know Dylan was never going to stick to a south ball for the full fight because he doesn't do that. And it, it was good, you know. Dylan was a tough man. He took a lot of punches, good punches to the body and head, good jab breaking him up. Um, Strong man, big, tough, strong man, but the range, my range is, is, is very special and I can keep him at that range. And if they walk into me, he started to, Andy Lee was saying in the corner, he's gonna, he's gonna chuck it all away and he's gonna come straight at you, because he, he's, gonna, he's gonna get impatient. And Sugar was going, right, so what Sugar said to me around five, he went, I want you to break this mother beep, beep, beep up. <laughs> he said, unload on him. He said, hit him to the body with that right hand and hit him to the top of it, let him have it, won't you Sugar? Send it straight down the middle, he was going. And I, and I think it was round five, round five, eight into the body, bang, with a left hook, and I hurt him. And then I put one downstairs to the right. 
It was good, you know, we had a good game plan. The game plan, I don't know, did you think it worked to what we were saying on the garden yesterday morning, Shane? Oh, yeah. yeah, so, and when he started walking forward like that, pushed it straight down the middle and then right up, bang, you. Yeah. You actually told me at the end of the round, at the end of the fifth round, that's what, it was this round, sixth round, you've got to get now. Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, I threw some good punches in my career, but it was definitely, definitely Wembley Stadium showstopper, wasn't it? Big right up, I got. I think Lennox Lewis could definitely be proud of that. Um, it was definitely a uh, great shot, and I was very happy with referee Mark Lyson. He'd done a fantastic job because if he would have allowed it to continue and me to storm into a minute or two or three more, he may have been in some serious trouble. So, big shout out to the ref, and he made the right call there. Uh, fantastic uh, call because he was all over the place. I was actually concerned even though I just chinned in, that it may have been loud and I was a no ref, don't be too long because I had to take him out. I would have had to plough into him again and hurt him. And I didn't really want to do that, but the referee made the right decision and that was it. Time and time again, the people that do write you off, you prove them wrong. Uh, but prove them wrong. Just yeah. a message to them, I know, you know, it won't bother you, but just a message to them about that. Well, prove them wrong. Just a message to them, I know, you know, it won't bother you, but just a message to the people that do continue to doubt you. Know, I don't think they doubt me. I think they love me. 94,000 at Wembley, the biggest crowd ever in this in this country, in Europe. Um, you know, people don't doubt me. They love me in this country, and I love them. 94,000 of my fellow countrymen and women packed in here tonight, spent their hard-earned money on tickets, and, and I, I am um, I'm overwhelmed with the support of that. You know, 10 years ago, I, I couldn't sell 10,000 tickets. Even when I went to, to Germany, I was the underdog to fight Klitsch, go in his own town. I was like, I've always been the opponent, I've been on the road fights, I've been like um, Marvin Agler, road warrior. Just give him a bag, send him over there. Send him a chip away, get in. And he goes to Germany, beats Vlad, goes to America as an opponent. I'm always in the way corner as well. And then it was about time I got my just deserves as the, uh, the home fighter against Dirk Chisora twice. Yeah. I was the away fighter. Yeah. I've been the underdog my whole life. I'm still in the dog. Look at me, I'm fat as, I'm fat as anything. But um, the old fat boy can fight. Um, and you know what it is, no matter how many times people put you down and write you off in life, never pay attention to it because it doesn't mean anything. Because I've proved, as just a, a normal, normal looking man, average Joe, that anything is possible. No matter where you are in your life, how dark of a place you're in, it doesn't get any darker than committing suicide when I was there. Um, to come back to to lose all that weight, to lose over 10 stone in weight and get back mentally well again and regain the crown jewels um, in boxing. It's been a fantastic career and you should never let anybody uh, crush your dreams because anything is possible and I'm definitely proof of that it's true. Well, well, Thank well, you. Well, Tyson, I, I didn't think we'd ever see a, a retirement shot like we saw with Carl Frosch. <laughs> And he's always said that finishing his career like that with one unbelievable shot up at Wembley made <coughs> stepping away easier. Do you think that will be similar with you? It was just such a perfect ending, a walk away knockout. You know what? If it, it was a knockout, and I was very happy with the knockout. But if it would have been a 12 round points decision, I would have been happy with that. And for me, it's not, it's not about anything else but getting the W. It's always been about getting the W. Um, and lately, we found out that the big GK is as strong and as powerful as any heavyweight that has been. But I didn't used to use it before. I was like a slip boxer, trying to slip and slide and not get touched. But now I'm using the weight at home and, and, and really letting them have it. it, um, it it's been paying dividends in the last few fights, as you've seen. I, it's been like, my, my last few fights have been like the gunfight at the OK Corral with uh, old Deontay. Um, but with Deontay Wilder, you can't try and box him. You can't outbox box him because if you are boxing for 12 rounds and he lands one punch and you wake up on the floor, it's pointless. So you've got to drag him into a fight. Um, and I showed that. I, I was put down, kissed the canvas four times against the man. We've had a good battle royale and, and then Dylan here. Everyone thought he was a, um, a dangerous man. Well, he was. But I uh, showed I was, I was levels above that. So, yeah, it's been, it's been fantastic. And, you know, like I say, I've enjoyed my career. It's been a fantastic career. And at 34 in a minute, every good dog has its day. And I know Frank will be up on, on, unhappy about that and top, top rank. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of money to be earned. But for me, 
know, I come from fuck all, I come from nothing. You know, it's never been about money. I'm not a money person. I drive round in a 07 um, Passat on 56 plate diesel. I don't care. I don't care what I've got. It's never been about money to me. I know a lot of people with money, big money, but none of them are happy, not one of them. And I know money can't make happiness. It's not even been about belts for me. It's not been about legacies. It's not been about anything apart from punching a motherfucker's face right in on the night. That's all it's ever been about, excuse the language. All I ever want to do is win. The money aside, money's beautiful, great. It's great to be paid for what you do. And if you're good at something, Ben Davison told me, if you enjoy something and you're good at it, you'll get paid for it. So I enjoy boxing, I was good at it, and I've been paid for it, but it's not the be all and end all of anything. I could end up in a council flat at any time, don't worry about that. Um, so it is what it is, and would it change me as a person? No. Do I need a mansion and a Rolls Royce? I don't. I've got them, but I don't need them. But it doesn't, it doesn't make of you as a man. You, a man is what you are in here. And if you're a good person in here, and you've got fuck all, you'll do for me. But if you're a millionaire and you're horrible, I don't want to know you. Because I've only got time for good people. Did you see if you knocked the youth's tooth out? Huh? Did you see if you knocked the youth's tooth out? I didn't see, to be honest. But, um, I don't know. Well, it's a, uh, it a pretty, pretty brutal knockout. Yeah. Have you spoke to Billy afterwards? You said he's I back did. up. Have you been in change room? How is he? What, what's your message to him? I spoke to him after the fight. Um, I gave him a kiss and a cuddle and a hug. Thanked him. Um, and I told him, I said, you'll be a world champion, Dylan. Um, but tonight, you just have to meet a great in the game, and that was it. Um, he, he come and give it his best. No, listen, there's no embarrassment losing to a better man on the night. At least you got the guts to go in there and have a fight. People will say, oh, Dylan White was shit. They'll say this, and I've seen them. People who've never had a fight in their life, they, talk, they call professional boxers rubbish. And I'm like, please get a glove on and have a fight yourself, and then tell me if you shit or not. So a big shout out to Dylan and his team. You know, here, everyone thought it was going to kick off, didn't you, in, this, in here, when we first come up face to face. Thought it'd be a kickoff, but we behave like gentlemen um, all the way through. Me and him, um, we diffused, we diffused it all the animosity, shook hands. I thought the weighing was one of the best weighings I've ever seen. Never mind getting each other by the throat. We was dancing to the music. It was great. It was fantastic. Never, I've never seen it done before. Have you sure? Yeah, and um, what's that saying we do? What do we turn restaurants into? Exactly. Tyson, Tyson, Tyson congrats, congrats for your win. Uh, my name is Andre, I'm from Ukraine, and I have, I have a question. What do you think about uh, fight uh, Joshua with Usyk, and uh, you uh, want fight with who? Yeah, I think it was a good fight when it happened last year. Um, and whoever wins, wins. Good luck to the both guys. I hope that they both train well and have good preparation and they give the fans the best fight possible. And to be honest, the honest answer to that is Clark Gable would say, I just don't give a damn. And quite frankly, I just don't give a damn who wins. None of my business. And the one thing that I've always prided myself on is never getting involved in anybody else's business. He looks like Usek. Are you Usek's brother? <laughs> <laughs> just look like him, doesn't he? <laughs> He's the guy who gets in the ring, he's the guy who takes the punches. And if he doesn't feel that he wants to fight, what am I going to try and coerce him or force him into doing that? Because that's how fighters get hurt. Exactly. And he needs to be, if he's fighting, he needs to be up there, right, in his own mind, with his own free will to do it. And that's how it is. He's had, he's been phenomenal. I've he's done, I've done everything asked of me. I've, I've done more promotion more interviews than anybody. I go above and beyond to promote these shows that I fight on. So I definitely deserve to be able to make a choice where I think that it benefits me the most. I've given 20 years to boxing, amateur and professional. I've had my brains knocked out. I've been, I've been put down, I've been dropped, I've been cut. I've had tough fights, I've had draws, I've had wins, I've boxed all over the world. And you know, how much blood can you get out of a stone? I give everything to you guys, put it on the line every single time. Um, 
and enough is enough. Well, I can say. If it was about money, I'd continue, but it ain't about money, so I'm happy. Yeah. Well, all I know is this would have been Bob's amazing night. You know, he's 90, came into the business in 66. Yeah. And I know he's sitting there, and I know you talked to him. I spoke to him on the phone. You talked to him in the ring. And I know he would, want to, he would want to be here more than anything. Yeah. It was like we talked about the press conference. Yeah. Historical for me, yeah. historical for him, and I know historical for all of us, but he was, uh, and it's really his body of work to watch what you did tonight. You know what, when, when I, uh, I had a meeting with Bob um, in 2019, I said to Bob, I said, what's the motivation, Bob? Why, at nearly 90 years old, why do you want to be involved with the British heavyweight? He's going, well, he said, I came into this game promoting the best heavyweight in the world. And he said, I'm going out of it promoting the best heavyweight in the world as well. I said, fair play to you. <laughs> so, yeah, big shout out to everybody. Um, thank you very much and good night. God bless.